remember, if you do have questions for us, if you want to raise something that you think we're not talking about, jump into voice chat right now, ask your question, because people in voice chat get priority. We have an entire list of questions that we could get through. We are giving people in voice chat prio. So if you have a question, now is your time to jump in and actually ask your question. Uh, Brock, how you doing, brother? I'm fine, I'm fine. How are you doing, my friend? Not bad at all. What's your question, Brock? Uh, first of all, I want to send you uh, um, greetings from the country of your ancestor, ancestry, from Germany. I'm actually Guten Tag. from Germany too. Good. Uh, um, I've been following your channel for about two years. So, and I'm um, on Twitch chat. You keep calling me Chaos. Oh, right. I'm, yeah, maybe you remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, just as a pretext, I haven't played retail WoW for about nine years. I quit with Mist of Pandaria, so wow. I actually hate. I actually hate retail WoW. What do you, you play keep, now? You, I play if I haven't played any Blizzard games for the last two years. In particular, I was a, I was a, the classical uh, classic Andy. I was your okay. WoW classic Andy. Yeah. And I, lo I love classic, I love all the base mechanics, I love managing mana, I love managing threat, I yeah. love playing with parry, dodge. That's mm -hmm. the kind of gameplay I like, a game where you can fail, and mm. only a gameplay where you can fail is where you can also succeed. So yes. that's my kind of stuff. Okay. But I, personally, I, I'm um, a history geek. Okay. I'm, I come from a law perspective to to that's the only the only reason why I kept following retail WoW was because of its law. Yes. That's the only thing that kept that kept me attached to the game. So my question to you is, um, do you think uh, now with uh, the new expansion uh, and under the, the snoozer I keep calling him the snoozer, uh, mm -hmm. we will completely abandon uh, WoW's roots in Greek mythology? Do, will we completely? go down this kind of Hollywood, Marvel, DC yeah. uh, way uh, of lore, of inspiration for lore for a while, because that's, okay. that's, that was, would be the last chord for me. If we abandon that, that uh, origin uh, yeah. in classical, uh, 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 classical Greek mythology, I would mm -hmm. completely abandon the game, because that was the last thing that kept me, from, kept me following. Yes. Uh, World of Warcraft retail. Okay, so on to that question. I'm pretty sure your question has two parts, um, if I'm not mistaken, because you asked that part, but then I think you also had one about content creators, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we'll get to the second part uh, in a minute. Let's let's focus on the first part, uh, the, the question that you just asked. So World of Warcraft obviously draws inspiration from a great many things. Uh, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Viking, uh, Norse mythology, uh, even some of the African mythologies are represented. You know, water spirits and stuff like that is very much an, a, a sort of sort of Middle Africa kind of uh, uh, mythological drive. So World of Warcraft has a lot of these influences uh, in it. And I, I don't see how Blizzard would ever be able to move away from that because those things are so deeply entrenched within the World of Warcraft story. What I do fear, um, perhaps more than anything, is the constant outcry uh, by by Twitter morons that, that sort of feel like everything is offensive. You know, if, if you do something and you kind of borrow from some kind of culture, um, then, then that is offensive. Like somehow that becomes an offensive thing that you've now borrowed. and. and I made this point on, on, on Twitch the other day. If you write a story with the sole purpose of not upsetting anyone, then really you can't write a story. There's nothing you can write because no matter what you write, you are going to piss off someone unless you write the most bland, bleak, vanilla story you can possibly think of. Um, you're never going to be able to, uh, to, to please everyone and great stories have never been pleasing to everyone. Great stories tend to have the, the, a bit of friction and, and a bit of sadness. And, you know, it, it's not appropriation, it's celebration. That's really the point of, uh, you know, taking things from other cultures around the world and drawing inspiration from it. It's to celebrate 
you know, the, the beautiful parts of those cultures, the ugly parts of those cultures, because every culture has it, you know, it has the beautiful side as well as the ugly side of that culture. And it is a celebration of what that culture is its whole. Now, Blizzard obviously have become very, very hyper focused on not causing offense to the, the uh, sort of Twitter cult. Uh, and the problem with those people is that they are offended by literally everything. So it doesn't matter what you do, you could throw a stone literally at random blindfolded and you will hit someone that's offended by something. Uh, which, of course, I live for that shit. If you're offended, fuck you. Um, I, I love that. Which I don't even... Shame. It's such a shame, actually, because it's it's the best part about the law. Of know? course it is. I don't know if Blizzard would... Like, it, you, I think you're safe specifically with things like the Greek and the Roman cultures. Because no one is really ever going to be offended on behalf of European history, right? Um, that's not really the things that people get offended by. So well, you should be lot, safe on those. Uh, there's it, a lot of rape inv involved, if we are honest. Well, Especially yeah, I mean, in group I mean, that is true for all of them. Every, Like I said, every culture has its good parts and its very ugly parts. And there's nothing you can really do about it. There's always going to be good and ugly parts. I think for now we're safe. Um, I... I I doubt very much. So, for example, we'll see throughout Dragonflight, but remember, the dragons are very closely related to the titans, and the titans draw heavy inspiration from uh, the Greek mythology, Roman mythology, thing, things like that. Um, you know, so I personally think we'll, we'll be able to see um, just how far Blizzard is willing to go to not include anything that might be offensive to some extent. You know, uh, we'll see. I times Blizzard would go the route of Warhammer, where in Warhammer, they don't give a fuck. So I just very recently learned in Warhammer, there is a god that literally raped another god. And their children from this rape uh, ended up doing like crazy shit. Like there's an entire born from this, this act that happened. They just go, whatever is cool is cool and we're going to go with it. And if you don't like it, that's really your problem. This is what's cool right now. I don't I don't think Blizzard should go quite that far, but I do think less of an onus on focusing. The thing that I'm far more worried about, so, you know, if you permit me, like, I don't think we're in, in sort of bad territory yet with that. I don't think we have to worry. There is something that I'm worried about when it comes to WoW writing that we'll again see. Um, in Hollywood, in video games nowadays, it seems like we we have moved away from the age-old Greek tragedy, you know, where stories are oftentimes tragic and the ending isn't always satisfactory to everyone. People die and, and this brings with it incredible emotional turmoil. In World of Warcraft, more often nowadays, it almost we want to write the feel-good story. You know, every story must have a very happy ending. And, and the Hollywood ending. Yeah, it has to be this Hollywood ending. And then what's how time and time again, the greatest stories are the ones who do not follow this sort of Hollywood end. You know, um, in Game of Thrones, you know, the Red Wedding is, is, is a moment that stands out to almost every fan of Game of Thrones as one of those really bittersweet moments because it, it was so horrible that it happened, but so cool at the same time because of the commo emotional connection that it has and, and the emotional strain that it puts on the viewer. Um, World of Warcraft, if, if I'm going to be very honest with you, and this comes from someone that actually do care, like love the Sylvanas story prior to Shadowlands, but let's be real. There is only one real ending for Sylvanas' character following the events of Legion and BFA, and, and that is death. Sylvanas should have died at the end of Shadowlands. The, the, it is the that's, only arc that makes sense. That's all she wanted, actually. Would you agree? That's all that she desired. I, I think, I, I mean, she hated life. She, she basically just wanted to destroy everything and then sort of give up. And then they wrote this weird redemption for Sylvanas, only because for some reason we aren't allowed to have um, bad endings anymore. You know, we're, we're not allowed to have um, endings that sort of leave the player with a bitter taste in their mouth and, and sort of feeling 
upset about how the end is playing out. We we need these endings where everyone sits around the fire. Well, yeah. Um, you know, I'm 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 reminded as someone that very recently got into the Final Fantasy universe, um, j just literally two nights ago, I finished my Palace, uh, the Palma, and uh, the end of Palace of Doma is sad as fuck, and actually left me just a little bit pissed at Yoshi P and the writing team because one of my bros again bit it, you know, died at the end of that, and. You, you look at that, and it's not the first time this has happened in FF14. They they consistently take some of the fan-favorite characters, and those characters are the ones that die as a result of it. So, you know, that's life. In life, your favorite character doesn't just always live happily ever after, you know? It's not 007. It's not, like, un, like impossible odds, and yet somehow... He has a watch and he's he's watches the thing that saves his life. That's not how it works in real life and in real tragedy. People die, you know, uh, things go wrong and you lose friends. And I, I sort of wish Blizzard would embrace that again. Instead, it feels consistently as if Blizzard wants to. They want to appease everyone with their writing. They want to make they, sure they that. Also, Sorry, yeah? yeah. They also completely want to remove the struggle. You know, that's for me at the core yeah. of, of Greek tragedy. The yes. struggle with with not only within the world you're living in, but also the family struggle. That's a yeah. very present scene in mm -hmm. uh, Greek tragedy. And that's uh, what also for me was the best part yeah. uh, for the Warcraft lore. That that's kept me glued to the story, you know. That's yes. also the reason why my, my Sylvanas was my favorite actor uh, for the last 10 years in World of Warcraft. Because yeah just like you that was the most relatable person in the world of walker story to me because she's one who realized that the world around her made no sense yes I, so that's the reason why i could relate to her their she struggles the there's, there's yes. something real exactly. there yeah exactly she didn't accept she, mm -hmm. she didn't accept the world around her and she wanted to shape the world and then when she wanted to to kill herself she yeah. realized not even in death i'm free and that that yes. made her absolutely go crazy. That's when uh, the walls can speak for her. Yeah, I mean the the truth is you you also have a character like Illidan. Why is Illidan so many people's favorite character? Very much the same story: struggle, suffering, strife. It's not all good. Like life isn't all good. It's a character that embraces the suffering of life and pushes through it. These are the heroes that that we ultimately want to believe in these are the heroes that we ultimately care about in in world of warcraft as a as you know as sort of a fundamental part of it and i feel like in world of warcraft it's it's nowadays more than ever under the tutelage of steve denuser of course steve denuser thinks that star wars the 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 newer star Wars films are many things the last two seasons of game of thrones were amazing um Steve Denuser's writing very much is this sort of TV feel-good yeah. writing where no one is ever truly angry or upset as as a result of it, and it's, it's annoying. Horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, um, you had a second part to your question, uh, Brock. That um, I think is actually also very interesting. So, what, what what was the second part of your question again? Well. Uh, I'm following a lot of WoW content creators, like every like every other one here, and uh, I noticed. Uh, how can I explain? I noticed they're going a bit too soft on on Blizzard at the moment, mm -hmm. for my for my uh, understanding or for my taste. Yeah. Uh, when I watched the, the new trailer, I wasn't that impressed. It it, it doesn't you know it. it <laughs> It was so predictable, you know, <laughs> the, the Drake save, saving the, the uh, uh, not a the giant falling Stony down. Stony Tony. Yeah, know? Stony Tony getting saved yeah. by Alex Straza, yeah? Yeah, and so I'm just not excited at all. And and I also feel like all the uh, uh, content creators that, that were quick, you know, to, to, to beat uh, Blizzard with a stick, now all of a sudden everyone is going soft again and totally uh, suffering from sh uh, short-term memory loss you know from all the shit 
uh, 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 that Blizzard has been thrown at uh, the community, yeah. at their own community, which is also for me the reason you always keep asking, uh, sh uh, does does uh, World of Warcraft deserve to die? And uh, this narrative, I think not. It doesn't deserve to die. I think I, it has to die, and it mm -hmm. it has to die because it's treating its own community so damn poorly. For in my opinion, um, at least for the last ten years. Uh, the World of Warcraft community has been, uh, you, you like uh, to use the term uh, 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 hobo dick, I call it eating, eating dog shit. They have, they have been feeding their own community dog shit for at least 10 years. And yeah. that's for me the reason why the game has to die. It's not about if it's deserving to die mm -hmm. or whatever, I think, because it's just bad. The people are treating their own community like shit and that's yeah. why the game has to die. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the first part of the question, and then we'll move to the second part. Um, well, third, the here's the for me personally, right? I have remained critical of past Blizzard, so I am still as critical as ever about Shadowlands. I'm still as critical as ever about BFA, even still critical of Steve Denuser. You know, I've so recently as last week said that that I still do not believe that Steve Denuser can actually write a good story. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I do not believe that Steve Denuser is up to the task. That being said, a lot of people want myself and other content creators to be critical of Dragonflight. The issue with me being critical of Dragonflight is I don't know anything about Dragonflight. I know only what they've shown us and what they've shown us is good. Right, they, 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 what they showed us so far is there is no borrowed power system, so that is a check in my book. And they, the Blizzard could literally have announced that we don't have an expansion of power, and I would have been happy because fuck borrowed power, right? But that announced dragon riding, which I have made videos on already, saying that it could work, but also very easily backfire. So, uh, on, on dragon riding right now, I'm looking forward to it as a feature if it is implemented correctly. Um, you know, the, the, the real issue right now, um, I think people are judging a lot of the content creators on our critique or our opinions on World of Warcraft as it stands now, not recognizing that we don't have much to go on. We have Blizzard's word. And they have said that they have listened and that they are hearing what players have said and that they are willing to change and they are busy changing. And then we have their actions. And so far, their actions seem to align with their words at the moment. The things that they are saying right now seems to line up with what they're saying, which is the first time, by the way, in the history of World of Warcraft that this has happened. In, uh, in Shadowlands, just before Shadowlands launched, Blizzard said, we hear you, we're listening. And then they went ahead and they literally announced everything the players hated from BFA, just with new skin. Um, you know, so this is the first time that Blizzard is, we heard what you said. We know that you don't like the borrow power systems. We don't want to keep you in the game for it to play whenever the hell you want to play. And if you don't feel like playing, you shouldn't feel like you're falling behind. Uh, and they're actually doing it this time around. So for now, I think a lot of content creators like myself, maybe even Asmongold, um, Preach, I think a lot are sort of looking at the expansion and going, all right, let's see what you got. So far, love what you've announced. Let's see what you got. Now, I can tell you, I will have my eyes peeled uh, on the beta because that's where I will be proven right or wrong. That, that is where Blizzard will show me whether or not they've listened. And I think that's the same for Asmongold. I think that's the same for Preach. Is that idea of, I can't judge it now because I know so little. What, what I've seen, I'm sort of excited by. I think those could be cool. Uh, but that's really, I don't know what else to say about it right now. So... I am excited for Dragonflight, purely just from a lore perspective. I think it'd be really cool. A lot of stories that you can dive into there. But I'm just as cautiously, uh, look, like almost pessimistic in that, let's see. 
because I'm gonna have my eyes wide open this time around. I know what to look out for now. We've had three expansions to practice this. You know, things aren't working. We tell Blizzard these things aren't working and Blizzard goes, but you don't understand. Then the game launches and the things that we said isn't working, isn't fucking working. And then it takes us a, an entire expansion to get those things fixed. Um, I, I don't think it's possible for us to just be negative right now. You know, um, or am I misunderstanding what the point that you're making? The point that I'm making is that the people should simply be more realistic. They should reflect on the things that happened in the past because yeah. Blizzard has been promising so much so often. And every year it's the same. Uh, the, they, they add the cosmetic stuff and the, the, the mounts into the store. You know, the best stuff gets into the store. Yeah. The cheap stuff is re rewarded in the game. That's just, it's just trash. And it, it's mm -hmm. been trash for so long. And yeah. I, 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 I have a hard time to understand the credit that content creators grant to uh, Blizzard because they don't deserve that credit. That's my point. Yeah, but the, the, you also have to understand negativity simply to be negative is also not going to be a good selling point. You know, um, you also have to think about the people watching your videos and this has nothing to do with money. It has to do with if I come out and I, I'm just scathing towards Blizzard right now, most people are going to say, dude, we know nothing about this expansion. What the fuck is your problem? Now, I could say, well, you know, look at his Blizzard's track history. Look at what they've done. You know, um, obviously, I can keep calling them out because look at what they've done. Is I don't know what this expansion is going to be yet. I know what they've said and what they've said sounds good. And this is why in every single quote unquote praise Blizzard, I do say this is what they've said. We'll see if this is what they ultimately do, right? And I've continuously told people, do not pre-order. Do not get too excited. Let's wait and see. But that really is the best thing I can do. Now, the, the other thing that I sort of think a lot of people have to keep in mind is I don't think the right way to deal with a company specifically in, uh, in this day and age is to keep a grudge if the company is showing signs of changing then say all right let's see where this goes you know I can, i'm not going to keep attacking if you do actually now have the interest to turn over a new leaf i'll give you prove me to prove to me that you are willing to turn over a new leaf you know um but i have said this and i think this is true for many content creators this is my last and potentially with Blizzard Entertainment. If uh, it goes the same route as uh, Shadowlands, I have no interest in, in coming back to WoW. Um, they, none. I, I, I will not game that just continuously makes the wrong choices. Right now, that's not what I'm seeing. So I can only wait and see, you know? That's all I can do right now is wait and see, praise the things that I think is good because I also have to believe that maybe not my videos, but maybe there is a Blizzard developer that watches my content. So what I want to do is I want to praise the things that I want to see more of. So I want to see I, I want to see Blizzard working on more and the world building. I want to see Blizzard refining dragon riding and making sure that dragon riding works in World of Warcraft. I want to see Blizzard really paying attention to gearing and the open world and the casual aspects of the game. So I will praise those things so that those things we wait for the beta so that I can start criticizing the things that isn't working. But to criticize things right now when I have no idea whether those things are going to be good or bad, uh, it, it would be futile, right? Because I don't know how dragon riding is going to play out. I, I don't know how the gearing is going to play out. Because I, I haven't seen it yet. I would have to try it first before I can actually say, yeah, fuck this. This is just bullshit. So that, that's sort of where I am right now. And I think a lot of content creators are there as well. Yeah, I just hope they stay true to their own values, you know? I mean, you can know one thing about me. Uh, I have no problem telling Blizzard to go fuck themselves when and if I think it's warranted. Uh, so you, you watch this space. If the beta comes out and it is a horrible experience, you need videos by me saying I don't really, I don't really give a fuck uh, about that. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see. Brock, uh, thank you so much for the questions, dude. Really appreciate it. 
Uh, do you have anything else uh, before I pull someone else in? No, I don't. I don't want to pick up uh, more space from your time. Uh, give the next person the chance to uh, ask their question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brock. Take care of yourself, brother. Thanks for the questions. Really cool questions. See ya. Peace.